Welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to take a look at adding a profile image to our user so then we can use it through our application, through submissions and stuff like that, right? So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sign into our application and then we're gonna to go to the profile page so we can, you know, start styling it. So at the moment we got this thing and uh, not really that pretty. Let's actually go ahead and check out what we have in our view application, the store. Let's commit it. Let's take a look at the base state and for our profile should have the username. We do have a couple of submissions. This array is empty, but we do grab them from the endpoint. But this is just the fact that we're not using a projection or anything like that. So let's go ahead and display the username here and then worry about the image. So let's go ahead and grab the index page from our profile. On here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a content uh, item layout, right? So where do we have this item content layout? There we go. So let's bring in the template and for the slot, uh, V slot. I guess, uh, content. For the content, we're gonna use the submissions. Okay, oh, all right. And the second template, CV slot item. Uh, we're gonna get the, what's it called? Well, the user information. Let's just put a div here instead of the card. And uh, I'll just pop this stuff over here. Let's delete the V card here and grab the profile from our UX store, right? So auth, we're gonna grab the profile. So uh, I have a feeling I'm gonna have more than just one thing in here. So let's just put the div here and we'll do VF profile. So this first div is purely for the display of the username and the avatar. So let's go ahead and say something like profile dot username and MD account. We'll keep it there for now. But now what we should end up with is more or less something, you know, more manageable and something that we've already handled the display off. Right. And we should, we will probably change this to be a changeable icon as well. So not just a question mark, but here's the thing that we want to work with. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate the item and I'm going to put a V button around it. I'm going to say, uh, let's have a V hover element where on our uh, hover element, what do we have V on? And we can grab hover from here, I think. I think this uh, we will just need a default. I can't remember exactly, but I think this is how you do it. What is this saying? Unable, uh, unresolved variable or type hover. Okay, so I can't remember. Let's go to Vitify docs and we'll just quickly peek at how they do it. Uh, so let's look for hover. Uh, let's scroll a little bit down here. This is disabled. So we can take a look at this. So V slot default, uh, V slot default. Okay. So just need to put slot here. Uh, not exactly sure of the notation why this is like this, but uh, I've never used like a slot uh, passing parameters into the slot to be used within the slot. Uh, but yeah, I'm a little bit foreign to that. So anyway, if um, we are hovering this button, uh, I think it was edit here as well. We want to uh, display a icon, but an icon which we can edit the profile image with. Otherwise, we, V else, we can uh, just put the MD account, right? So uh, let's take a look at this. If we hover over it, you can see that we get a little button with the icon, which we can press, right? So uh, let's go ahead and add some logic that will essentially be responsible for changing the image for, well, the profile image, right? So let's just get an input box. And this is generally how you do file inputs without using the Vitify's file input uh, helper. So you just make them type file. Uh, what do we accept? Uh, image uh, slash all images and class uh, display none. So we want it hidden. And when we 
click on this button, we want to trigger this. So let's go ahead, add a ref here, and we'll call this profile image input. A little bit verbose, but better to actually know what that is, right? So that kind of describes the input file as well. Uh, so uh, what was that? We want unclick. Let's go to dollar refs name of our reference and just click on it right so it's essentially a proxy to we have a pretty button and all it does is just proxies the click events onto our hidden input file right uh nothing too crazy uh next thing that we want is on change uh we want to change profile image and let's go ahead into here get the methods and we'll do this right so uh, if you want to pause the video here and attempt to make your own profile, changing profile logic, go for it. Otherwise, just keep following along. Uh, let's go ahead and put an E here for, I think it, we should get an element here. So let's go ahead, say console E. We will go back here. Let's just refresh because I'm seeing some errors there. I'm just making sure that it's not current errors. So. Uh, let's take a look at the events and uh, so, so I always sort of take a look at it because I don't work with them that much but we want to grab the target and target is the input okay so uh, the way that we would extract the file is const e uh, or actually let's just say file input we'll say e target and then on the file input we can uh, grab the file itself because this is going to have files and we can grab the first one. I don't know if we'll be able to see that from the event. So let's take the target and on here we should have files, right? So you can see it's an array and we can see the file that I've picked, right? So here we got the file. Now what we want to do is we want to post it, right? And the way that you do it with JavaScript is you have to create the form data programmatically. So let's go ahead and say const form data equals new form data and all we're going to do to this form data we are going to append the image we're going to put the file here right so now we can use this with axios although just understand that this is not going to be json format this is going to be form data format so form data is a simple key value list okay so it's basically a dictionary oh uh, once we got the form data, let's go ahead and return this uh, Axios where we are going to put. So we're basically, we're, we're saying always update, right? And me profile or image. Yeah, uh, update my image essentially. And we are just going to supply form data. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, kind of, uh, introduce a gate sort of thing so uploading image I'm gonna say false I uh, don't want the semicolon here let's grab this so if we're uploading image let's go ahead return otherwise this image upload will say that it's true and when we, we will return a profile by the end of this and for this uploading image again we'll just set it to false right so can only perform this operation again only once the previous operation has finished otherwise we're just going to exit and not do anything okay and another thing that we can do with this uploading image is we can actually disable the button so disabled and we can bind upload image here right so we're disabling the button and we're disabling the function itself which is responsible for uh, uploading the image right so another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into auth and just the way that we commit the profile over here, uh, I'm going to do the exact same, right? So I want this method here. So in the methods, let's go ahead and map actions. Uh, let's see. Oh, grab it. There we go. Let's expand it. And from auth and actually not actions, we want map mutations uh, because it is a mutation, the, the, what's it called? The save profile. So, uh, will it know, will it, uh, save profile? Will it know? Okay. So it, it can navigate so we can pretty much use it. So on this dot save profile, 
because we're going to get a new profile. Let's create an object and pass the profile into here, right? Another thing that I would like to do is the file input itself. What we want to do is just reset the value on it. Okay. It's just, I mean, overall health of the code. It just kind of reset the stuff. So I'm just going to move that file name into here because we weren't really using it anywhere else. So but anyway, this is what it looks like. Let's go ahead and fix up our backend to receive this file image and save it and you know, the rest of the stuff. So first of all, on our user object, what we want to do is we want to have the image that we want to store, right? So you can call this profile image. I'm just going to call it image. Then going to the user controller, uh, we kind of already defined the action that we expect here. So let's go ahead and just copy this and we'll rename a bunch of stuff. So on me, uh, let's start with actually uh, setting this to put. So HTTP put image and we'll do update user our update profile image. Uh, right, so for the task, we are going to re return I action result and I form file is the choice of our file submission, right? So once we got the, that, let's go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff. First thing that we want to do is we want to grab the user ID. So uh, let's go ahead and see grab user ID and do a couple of checks. So if uh, the image that we have submitted is null. Well, let's go ahead and return bad request, right? Something has obviously gone wrong. If the user ID, or rather we want to grab the user itself. So let's go ahead and use this function that we got over here. We will make this asynchronous and we'll check if user equals null. So we don't have that user. We'll just return no content. So this is 404. This is 404 and this is 400. Okay. And then, well, after we have the image and we have the user that that's when we can proceed to do our stuff. Right. And at the end, because I do return the profile, we are just going to, going to return the user after saving all the changes. Right. So because we, we will save the image to the file system and then we'll have to set the path on the user. Right. So once we got that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a library to help me scale the image. So how we're using FFmpeg to edit the video, we're going to use a library to edit the image. Okay. So go ahead, open up a, your nugget package manager. And what you want to uh, type in is image sharp, right? And you're looking for this package called six labors image sharp, go ahead and add it to your API. Right. And once we got it, I obviously do not remember it off by heart. So let's go ahead and Google for image sharp. We will land on their GitHub page. So hopefully this still exists when you're looking at this and uh, the documentation. I mean, that's where we're going to go because I mean, they will have samples and we just want some code to just process the image. Right. So go to the process image section and you will find a little example where we can resize it. That is precisely what we want. Uh, there are, there is the image format section where we can essentially go from PNG to JPEG. And if you remember, PNG is more bandwidth. JPEG is a little bit less. So we want to be saving in JPEG. And here's where we provide uh, the format, right? So as a second parameter, when we save the image. So uh, let's go ahead, just grab about this much code. All right, we will have the using statement. Let's go ahead and just get rid of all the comments and the image. What we're going to do is we're going to processor. We're going to rename it to image processor, right? The rest of the stuff, we will need to just import a couple of things. The mutate function as well. We'll just need to import stuff on here. Let me close Explorer there. What we will do is we will just shorten this down to 48 pixels. Okay. I think that's a pretty standard size for a profile image. I don't think we'll ever be in a situation where we'll need like a big image, right? 
for, well, at least not for now. Uh, the save function over here does have an asynchronous overload, so let's go ahead and, and use that. So two parameters that we're missing is the input stream. So where are we getting our image from? Well, we have the image right there. So let's go ahead, supply our image, and we can just open read stream, right? And we are passing it into here. And this has an asynchronous overload as well. So there we go. And then we need an output stream. So we need to save this somewhere. So uh, arr, arr, stop. let's go ahead and make a using statement. And here we will just create a var stream and this image over here, I will actually to re rename it to just a variable, like, you know, keeping consistent. And then system uh, IO file, we just want to create a file. And now we want to, you know, to generate paths. And again, this is going to change once we're using the bucket. So let's delete the curly braces there. So we know that this using is only applied to this scope. So after this is finished, both of these using statements will dispose of the stream as of their respective streams. Uh, this does have an await uh, keyword. So let's go ahead and use that. But anyway, we need to supply the path where we actually want to end up saving uh, the image that we processed. Right. So what we're going to do, and this will be probably the next episode from services, let's get our video manager, because the video manager is no longer a video manager, it become it is becoming a little bit more of a file manager. And I think that's what we're going to transfer it to. Okay. So for the video manager, let's go ahead and generate our file name, right? So how we have generate thumb file name and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and create our own version here. So generate thumbnail file name. What we want to do is profile file name. I think that will be it. And for the thumbnail prefix, let's just make sure that we have a profile prefix and we'll just put a P here. So the profile prefix, let's go ahead, put this here, we'll copy the name as well, we'll go back to the user controller and instead, instead of generate thumbnail file name, we'll use generate profile file name. So the reason that we're grabbing the file name here is that later on the image, we can just go ahead and save the file name, right? So we generate a file name that we're going to save and then we're assigning it to the user. So video manager also has a dev video path to which we can supply the file name. So let's go ahead and rename this to save path. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead, grab the stream, put it here. And the second parameter that it expects is a encoder. And we want a JPEG encoder because that's what we're saving it to. So in the generate, uh, profile file name, just make sure that what you have here is a JPEG file format, right? Uh, let's see, make static. Uh, yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and make these static. I think that's a good change. And other than that, that is pretty much it. So we're guarding against an empty image. We're guarding against an empty user. We're generating a file name that we will put on the user and we are converting the image and saving the image. And then we're basically saving the database and returning the profile. Uh, the profile at save, we saved the profile. So it's over here, the mutation, right? So we are going to update the profile. Another thing that we want is, uh, let's remove this image. On the user itself, we're gonna start to have an image, right? So we actually want to display the image if we do have the image. So let's go ahead and where we have this MDI account, let's go ahead and copy this and we'll say V else if on the profile, on the profile, we have the image. Let's go ahead, delete that last part because what we actually want to do is we just want to have an image and that's a self closing one. And on the SRC, uh, we will repurpose on the video manager a oh, video manager, video controller, uh, this path right here, I know, I know it's a little bit bad, but again, I think once we are refactoring the video manager, the video controller, it will, it kind of falls into that same place where it's kind of like, it's no longer a video manager, it's a file manager. And maybe what we want to do is we want to keep the video manager, uh, sorry, the video controller and create an image controller. 
And but I'll I'll have another think about it and I'll give you my justification for that. Unless my justification will be something like that's because I decided, right? Which is pretty much uh, which is pretty uninformative and. Uh, uh, sometimes that's actually what you need to do because the decision is arbitrary and making progress is a lot more important than just trying to make a what you think is a good decision because if you don't know you just need to make a decision and make sure that the decision that you make can, will be amendable but that's part just part of uh, writing clean code so anyway uh, videos uh, what do we have on the video controllers so api videos and then just the video and what we're going to do is we're just going to supply the profile image here and i think we can supply an alt text profile image right here so if we're hovering we're displaying an edit button if we have an image we're displaying that image otherwise we will display an empty icon okay so once we got that i think that is pretty much it for now now let's go ahead and go back to our application. We will need to sign in. Okay. So there we are. There is our user. Let's go into profile. Let's go ahead and actually check something. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to console log the file input. So the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to run a test where it's allowing me to upload the same image. That means the logic is correct. Okay. So we upload an image, there we go, there is the image, right? If we take a look at our uh, WW root folder, so there it is, you can see it's very small and pixelated. The actual size of the image is around seven kilobytes, right? And let's go ahead, what I want to do now is just re-upload the same image and you can see that we're re-uploading it. So that is because we are resetting the value here. and. I think it's just important to be able to do that. You can see if an image is kind of of wacky uh, dimensions. So if it's like uh, uh, 19 to uh, 16 to nine aspect ratio, it will be a little bit cramped. So I will take a look if we can do anything about it. If not, then our users will just have to upload a good picture, you know? Uh, the other thing that we can do is we can actually put the image over there as well, right? So let's go ahead to our default layout, all right? On here, on the auth uh, map state, we actually already have it here. So let's go ahead and add the profile here and the code. We can just grab it from here as well. So for the V avatar, let's go ahead and where we have the profile icon right here. And actually, does it say profile on there? only if we are authentic okay okay so this is the initial button okay so this is where we want to put it cool so inside of here i guess uh that's where it goes uh we will uh, get rid uh let's put the account circle here the button we no longer needed and let's go ahead and see what this looks like so profile image it has the v else if so let's say the if and this will be V else. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Okay. And can we click on it? We can. I'm just hoping that that is the correct organization of the components, but it looks okay to me. Let's go ahead and cramp the size a little bit. Let's say 48 uh, because, oh, this is 48. So it's maximum size. Let's try 36. Let's see what that's going to do to our profile. So. Okay, so that I think that looks a little bit better now, but here we are. So if we want to change it, we can, and that should actually just update it in both places, right? But you can see that if we have a wide image, it's going to be a little bit squished. So again, I'm going to take a look. At, I'm going to see if I can do anything about that. But nevertheless, I think we'll keep it at that. We'll preserve the theme of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this episode, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, Make sure to leave them in the comment section or ask me on my Discord server. I also stream on Wednesdays and Sundays. A link is in the description. And hopefully, I'll see you in my other episodes.